Hey guys, what I'd like to do today is talk to you about a subject which I absolutely love. That subject is intentions. And I'll tell you exactly why I want to talk about this. Because if you have an issue in your life, it's so important to realize why we do what we do and also how we can reconnect with the thing which is running the issue. And that thing which is running the issue in my mind is the unconscious mind. Because if you could consciously change or let go of a problem in your life, where it be a form of addiction or bad habits or limiting beliefs or thoughts, fears, phobias, anxieties, you name it, whatever it is, if you could consciously change yourself, you would, wouldn't you? But if you cannot change it yourself, it must mean that the unconscious mind is running the issue. Now, when it comes to the unconscious mind, it does many great things for us. It runs a fight and flight response. It runs all the habits so we don't have to think about things, very much like driving. If I get in my car, I start to drive and I don't even think about it anymore. It becomes second nature. So my unconscious mind does many great things for me. However, it can make mistakes. Like anyone, like anything, it can make mistakes. So when it comes to having an issue, whether it be a fear of phobia, anxiety, depression, addictions, whatever it may be, the unconscious mind is running it. Now, usually we tend to begin to hate ourselves or our mind and body for running this horrible behavior. For some, it could be that fear and they think, well, I wanna get on a plane, I wanna get to be able to drive, but for some reason, my stupid mind and body is just not helping me. It's so fearful and I know it's stupid to have this issue but I can't let it go. So we start to get this resentment and this anger toward ourselves. Now, like anything, if you were to have that anger and resentment to a friend of yours for doing a bad behavior and you continue, continually projected that to that person and told that person all about why you don't like them doing that behavior because it's having an effect on your life, how would that person begin to react? Would they react in the most positive way? Would they react in a most high confidence way? Now we know that's an answer which is going to be no way. They're gonna take it personally and they're gonna start to feel bad and they don't quite know what to do. Now let's consider that friend being your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind is ultimately there to serve you, to support you and to protect you. And it's being us running these behaviors and habits for the best of intentions, like a very much like a young child, trying to please you, but not quite doing so all the time. So they might want to be able to create this, this child, do this most wonderful painting for you. But that painting happens to be on your wall in your house. And you think, oh my God, they've just destroyed my wall. I'm gonna have to clear all that up. So wonderful intentions of that child wanting to please you with their wonderful artistic skills, but the behavior itself didn't quite work out. That is exactly what your unconscious mind is doing when it's running a behavior you dislike. And that will go for every behavior. It thinks it's doing a good job for you. In fact, it thinks it's doing such a good job for you, it takes control and does it automatically. You may be thinking, well, why does it do this bad behavior when I know I don't like it? Well, consider this for a moment. When the time of this behavior came into reality and was formed, Consider maybe the age that you were. Now for some, it could be as young as one or two years old. For others, it could be in their teenage years. For other people, it may be in the last few weeks. But let's consider in the, with the intention of when they were five, or when you were five, six years old, 10 years old, in other words, a young child. How much knowledge and information did you have? How much wisdom around the world did you have to make the best decision for your future? I'm gonna guess at 10 years old, you probably didn't have all the knowledge and information you needed at that point of time to make the best decision. Now as an adult, we can make that right decision, but if your unconscious mind is running it for those period of years and it thought it was making the best decision, that will become the habit and strategy for being the way you are like you are when it, in terms of this issue. Now for other people, or even the same people, but say it's later down in life, so maybe it was a few years ago, the chances are that problem was created and began to take its form when you were under stress, emotional stress, or even physical stress. So let's take, for example, someone was so stressed out at work that 
the unconscious mind thought the best way to get out of that situation is to create a symptom inside of you to get out of it. So that could be a panic attack, that could be a migraine, it could be anything just to get you out of that situation. Or in other situations like a, the behavior of phobia, when that phobia was created, you were not in the calmest, most tranquil, most open place in the world. In fact, you were probably under great emotional stress. So with that in mind, the unconscious mind makes a quick decision, thinking what it's doing in that moment is there to serve and to protect you. But now, in retrospect, we know that's not the case. But what we have to understand in order to make change is that your mind and body is trying to do the best for you at any given moment. So the intention, like the main area of this subject, the intention is to try to protect you or try to help you in some way. If we take the intention of the fear of failure, well, they, it's quite obvious there, we don't want to fail, we don't want to look stupid, we don't want to feel bad, we don't have to go in a situation and feel like a failure. So the unconscious mind creates this belief system, thinking, well, I don't want you to go out there just in case you will fail. So it's very much a protective mechanism. Same thing for I'm not good enough or I'm not capable. These are intentions or protection mechanisms to keep you in your comfort zone. And the same thing for fears of phobias. We know that's a protection mechanism. Even if we go to things like addictions, why do people go to drugs or do certain bad behaviors? Say if it was alcohol or drugs, it could be to change their emotional state. So the intention behind the behavior is actually positive. And if you think of something like just like overeating or smoking, why do we do that? It could be comfort, it could be boredom, it could be any of these things. So there'll be a gain from keeping the issue. Now you may not think that just yet, but just consider this. As I think about the problem in my mind, what's the positive intention as to why my body is doing this? Forget about the bad behavior. We know it's a bad behavior. That's how we know it's a bad problem. So let's just consider taking a step back and think about the intention there. What is my mind and body trying to do? Usually it will be a protection type of mechanism. Now, the more we understand that, we begin to connect to our unconscious mind. Now, put it in a, the frame of talking to your friend. I know that my friend, although they did a bad thing, their intention was positive. They were trying to help me. Now, if I begin to approach that friend in that manner, are they more willing to make a change or maybe learn something new? Of course they will, because you're understanding what they're trying to do. You're not going all out, going, why are you doing this? Why are you making my life a living hell by giving me this issue? Or by even running the issue? So when we come to consider the intention behind the behavior, we know it's positive. When we do that, we're actually welcoming our true friend, our unconscious mind, who's always been trying to protect us, a new way of doing things. We're saying, look, I don't like this behavior, but the intention is good. So there's no hate, there's no anger, there's no bad energy directed to our own, our own selves and our unconscious mind. Now we're saying, well, I don't like the behavior, but ultimately it's my friend. So this problem I have is actually a friend of mine. And I say this all the time when it comes to anxiety. Anxiety is our friend, it's trying to help us <clears throat> and protect us in some way. But if we begin to belittle ourselves, belittle our mind and body and the behaviors that we run or the issues that we run, that creates separation, it creates conflict. And the more conflicted we are, the more we're never going to change. We need to become at one with ourselves. We need to be able to start negotiating a new way of doing things. So we've got to consider and take in our unconscious mind and say, look, I know this is not working and I know what you're trying to do is protecting me, but let's do a new way of doing things. So here's your job ultimately if you want to make changes. As you go to sleep at night, take 10 to 15 minutes acknowledging why you do what you do for the best of intentions. And then with that in mind, you begin to welcome your unconscious mind and say, look, this behavior, although not getting results, I understand you're trying to do something good for me. However, is there a way I can get the same results of safety or protection or escapism, whatever the positive intention is, but in a way without this behavior? And you may even begin to come up with new ideas and new ways. So instead of acting like this, I'd like you to be safe by being like this. 
So we're now beginning to suggest to our unconscious mind with that open connection and negotiation, a new way of doing things that will keep you safe but keep you happy with all the control and freedom that you desire. This way, we're working with our, our body. The part of us which has been disconnected, which made the best decisions it possibly could at that moment in time of your life. But we're saying, look, this is a new way of doing things. By doing so, we get into rapport with our own mind and body. I and mean, if we're in rapport with something, consider this as a metaphor. When you're in rapport with someone in your life, a partner, a friend, or someone who you've just met, you are able to communicate with them and they're able to respond. True rapport is them taking on suggestions and your viewpoint in a way that is very welcoming, which is resonating to them. So we're approaching our unconscious mind in the same manner. We're getting the rapport of the unconscious mind so it will be able to work for us in the most efficient way. So we're letting go of old decisions and a way of doing this is by saying, what do I need to learn from this which once learned will allow me to be safer in the world? And you can do that with your unconscious mind as well. Speaking to you, the unconscious mind, what do I need to learn, or what do you need to learn, that once learned will allow me to have the safety but let go of the behavior? And then sit back and relax and notice the learnings coming to you. They may be in words, they may be symbolically, they may be in any manner really. But just take that time to be open with yourself, to rebuild that, that or to reestablish that connection of who you are. So you become whole and content, and you begin to suggest to your unconscious mind a new way of doing so. So you're taking this 5, 10, 15 minutes every evening to reconnect and suggest a new way of doing things to learn and grow as a person. This will cause your unconscious mind a new direction. You're ultimately leading it. You're harnessing your unconscious mind to say, not this, but let's do this now. And because it's there to please you, because it's there to protect you, because it's your true friend, it will work for you. But berating ourselves, saying how, why am I so stupid? Why are you always doing this to me? That creates conflict. That will create more separa separation. Now is a time to welcome your unconscious mind and begin to work with it. So you are a friend to yourself. You begin to support yourself. And in turn, it will support you and find new ways of being beautiful and wonderful in the world. Because that is exactly what you are. You are wholeness, you are oneness, you have all the resources inside of you to make any change that you desire. So I think that's going to be a wonderful way in reconnecting with yourself and transforming your life for good. This is something that I always do, this is how I made changes in my world by understanding that my body's trying to protect me. I've just got to harness it, communicate with it, and it will respond to that. And that's where I become whole. Yeah, life happens, I have issues, I'm a real person. However, I can deal with them much more quickly and effectively with this type of insight and information. Rather letting it continue to separate or feel conflicted, I can deal with it right there and then and get the learnings I need and really work with my unconscious mind. As I said, I'm human, I go through stuff, life happens, but now I'm starting to react to life in a way that I think is healthy and beneficial. So rather being just a product of my environment, being a product of life, I'm allowing my life to be a product of what I choose to see, choose to create, and choose to be. That is something that I want for you, and I really hope you enjoyed that tip today. For more information about me, go ahead and visit my website, josephclough.com. Download my apps, they're all free. They're just coming out onto BlackBerry, uh, Windows 8. Also, the new version of Android's coming out very soon. And naturally, it's on my iPhone, or sorry, my iPhone and iPod and all those other crazy cool things. It's all there for you to have. Download it, take advantage of it. And if you're enjoying it, go ahead and leave a review. If you're liking this video, if you're listening, if you're watching it on video, if you're listening to it, go ahead and review it and make a comment and so on. It just means that more people will be able to get this information. Every week I'm providing videos and audios for you. I'm here to support you. I want to help you for free as much as possible. So this is something I love to do and I love to hear what you think. So always be great. Keep going for it and you're awesome. You really are. Many thanks and goodbye.